What were some of your challenges in putting this together really all through archival footage without any talking heads or new interviews? What, what was the, the process there? I mean, it's the, the first time we've made a film this way, 100% archive. Our first film about Blur was kind of 50% uh, a live story that was happening with the reunion tour and 50% historical. So we, we'd kind of done archive in a way, but then our second film was a concert film. So this one, uh, it was a completely new practice for us. And I mean, the challenge was, you know, the brilliant thing about Lizzie's book is, you know, there's all of these sources that are, are just oral. So you can kind of construct the story. We had to find the pictures to go with those stories or find pictures that told different stories. Um, and that involved more detective work. You know, we're used to going onto sets and filming, but on this film, it was, it was kind of a team effort with our researchers, our producer, Vivian, our editors, Sam and Andrew. And it, it was a real collaborative kind of effort to to just you know any possible route to find archive was taken so whether that be leads from people on the ground in new york or whether it be going onto an old chat room and seeing that somebody had been at a show and filmed it we were kind of uh, over two or three years we were just you know very very kind of slowly but surely building up this incredible bank of archive that came, you know, some of it had been in a lockup for 20 years. Some was under wow. people's beds. Some was were photographs that had yet to be developed. We, we got a, a case full of um, 35 mil films that basically had been undeveloped since 2001. And, you know, so it was a real in-depth process. We went through periods where we we're like, well, how are we going to tell this part of the story? We've got nothing. And then you'd get that amazing. You, it was a lot of kind of peaks and troughs of like yeah. excitement that something had come in at the last minute. Uh, I mean, we got LCD sound systems first ever show right at the 11th hour. So it was just, you know, constantly evolving film. It, it was also exciting finding, searching out and finding like early interviews as well. Stuff that people hadn't hadn't heard before you know that someone had recorded on a dictaphone like 20 years ago and that kind of i think gives the film a, a certain quality because there's you've got a mixture of people talking and you know slightly looking back but you've also got people in the moment who are talk you know being interviewed on backstage as they're about to go on on you know or you know to play a show or or, or on tour or whatever so i think finding that stuff as well was gave the film and kind of gave it its voice a little bit really and we we got hold of like you know a bunch of journal uh, it was good being in the uk because the, obviously like mm. the music uh press here was is insane or was it it was insane and like you know <laughs> there were people who had whole caches of, of tapes of interviews that they'd done so some of the audio that's in the film comes from contemporaneous uh interviews with people so we were able to make it you know what we didn't want to make was a behind the music type documentary we wanted to make something that feels kind of lives and breathes and you feel like you've been dropped into that time and yeah i think the other thing like covid really helped us out weirdly because we we were all we were going to come to new york and shoot some bits at first but covid allowed us to make it 100 percent archive and then it also meant that a lot of people were stuck in their houses and they had the time <laughs> to go up into the attic or, or to kind of like you know they, they were a lot more amenable to being given a task than they might have been if their normal lives were going on so i mean can't I'm not saying thank God for COVID already. <laughs> <laughs> That's the headline. Uh. Yeah, 